Hey guys, so it's Amanda. Um, today I'm kind of doing a serious video. Um, this is something that is very close to my heart. And I just think that there's some things that need to be said about this certain issue. Um, I hope not to ca cause any controversy. Um, but this is complete fact. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to dive right in. So I'm just going to take this picture. This is a picture of my grandmother and I on my second birthday. Um, my grandmother had breast cancer um, when I was very young. Um, she ended up um, going through chemo and I guess it, she got a mastectomy and everything and it worked. But then she had a stroke not too long after and I know the breast cancer really contributed a lot to that. And it is October and it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. and. There is something that really just gets under my skin about the word breast cancer awareness. And obviously it's something that has touched my heart and um, I think about her every day. Um, but there's a lot that needs to be said about that whole thing. Um, I recently watched a documentary, Not it wasn't recent, it was like a few months ago. And it's on Netflix it's called Pink Ribbon and I actually did a video about this. Um, but it really exposes the truth behind breast cancer awareness and that a lot of money is being used to glamorize the disease and really just being like, hey, let's make this pink and that'll make this company look good. And that really doesn't do anything. We all know that cancer exists. We all know that. I mean, it's in our pop culture. You watch any movie these days and if someone in a movie didn't die because of a car accident, they died because of cancer. You know, if we made a movie in the Middle Ages, it would be the Black Plague. Like, it's just the kind of thing that everyone's talking about and everything's in. And they always say there's not a cure for cancer and all this stuff. And really all that they're doing is making things pink. Um, a lot of, a very small fraction of funds that go to Susan G. Komen are geared toward prevention. And I think prevention is the biggest thing in the world that needs to be addressed. And I'm making this video really not just to complain about that, but in particular recently, this year, there's been a lot of different things, but this year I was looking at my coupons and I saw an advertisement for Procter & Gamble I wish I had it to show you, but um, on the front, you know, I had this older black woman, and she was smiling and had wearing pink, and obviously she was a breast cancer survivor. They had all this, you know, breast cancer stuff on it, and she was their son or something. And then I flipped to the inner page, and it said, um, "Early detection saves lives," which is so true, absolutely, 100%. Everyone should know how to check out their bodies and and take the proper um, precautions with her doctor. Um, but one thing that really got on my nerves, it wasn't that, and I've seen this advertisement probably four other times, not just in the newspaper, um, is really Procter & Gamble. I'm not hating on that company in particular, but it is very hypocritical of them to be posting that. And this is why. And again, other companies have done this. For example, KFC one year did pink bucket. When KFC is probably the worst thing you could eat. If you eat a lot of KFC because you're like, I'm breast cancer, yay, breast cancer awareness, you will get sick, whether it be cancer or something else. But that's a whole other can of worms. Um, Procter & Gamble, again, not to hate on them, they are, if you don't know, their brands include, um, let's see, Nice and Easy, World B, uh, Always, Fusion, Head and Shoulders, Pantene, Secret, Aussie, CoverGirl, Gillette, Herbalescence, Olay, Safeguard, Tampax, Crest, Ivory, Old Spice, Scope, Venus, Bounty, Downy, this is just some. Joy, Pamper, Swiffer, Cascade, Comet, Drift, Febreze, Loves, 
Pe Pepto Bismol Tide, Bold, Charmin, Duracell Gain, Metamucil, Prolsec, Fix, Bounce, Cheer, Dawn, Era, Imes, Mr. Clean and Puffs. And that's just some of them. Other ones aren't really ones that you hear about that they own. But, um, so anyways, so they own all of those. And again, a lot of those have a little advertisement on it with a pink ribbon and like, like I've seen Pantene bottles. Um, and here's the problem. Set aside that there's a billion um, chemicals like in their cleaning products like Gain and, and Tide and things like that. Let's just focus on the beauty products. Um, this is breastcancerfund.org. It's not just some cheesy little website. This is, and I quote, this is talking about parabens, which I will get to in a second. Parabens are used, used to prevent the growth of yeasts, molds, and bacteria in cosmetic products. Parabens appear in some deodorants and antiperspirants in addition to personal care products that contain significant amounts of water, such as shampoos, conditioners, lotions, facial and shower clean cleansers, and scrubs. So, blah, blah, blah. And then it also says... Um, parabens are absorbed through intact skin and from the gastro... Gastro... Inten, ten, <laughs> Gastrointestinal tract. I got it. <laughs> Measurable concentrations of six different parabens have been identified in biopsy samples from breast tumors. Also, this is set aside from this, but I've also read that it's 99% of breast tissue, and this is from different sources. I will link this below. But 99% of breast tissue that is cancerous contain parabens, and I feel like that can attribute why people who are very healthy, who eat a lot, who eat very healthy, who exercise, still get cancers, especially breast, breast cancers. Okay, let's see. Parabens have also been found in all urine samples, and this is breast cancer patients, examined from a demographically diverse sample of U.S. adults through some study. Adolescents and adult females are higher levels of methyparaben and propylpare in their urine than did males in similar ages. And that is, of course, because of cosmetic use. Plus, women tend to use a lot more products on them. Higher levels of and probably very men have found in the elixia quadrant of the breast nearest the underarm. This is the region which the highest proportion of breast tumors have been found, which can be because of deodorant. Remember, um, Procter & Gamble will make um, Old Spice and Secret, a big one. Although paraben concentration in the tissue samples are were, was not related to location of breast tumors, so that's not important. And then it says parabens are estrogen mimickers in the potency. I'm sorry, I can't read. Uh, in the um, potency of the response being rated to the chemical structure, parabens can bind to the cellular estrogen rep receptor. They also increase ex expression of many genes that are usually regulated the natural estrogen, I don't know what that says, estradiol, and cause human breast tumor cells to grow pro proliferate in vitro. Nevertheless, parabens as a class do not fully mimic estradiol as radical as regards these changes cellular gene expression, nor are the effects of parabens identical. I'm not exactly sure what that last little part means, but basically, and again, this is from not Susan G. Common, but breastcancerfund.org, um, a liable source, if you ask me. Um, and so the point is, oh, and then... Procter & Gamble has a stupid little site where it's like, paraben safety in cosmetics and all this, we care about your safety crap. And just saying that it is approved by the FDA in this toxicology thing and just this whole thing when they're really just trying to save their ass and trying to make it look like it's okay, we're just greedy and we use this paraben shit in our product. I'm just kidding, excuse me. 
in our products so that we can be cheap and um, preserve our products. Now I have two products here. This is from my get rid of pile, stuff I used to use and do not use anymore. And let me just say, this, this is a conditioner. This does not have parabens in it, but it has a bunch of crap that I can't even pronounce. And then, I had it somewhere here. This is a concealer and, yeah, two different parabens in it, both by Procter & Gamble. So, really the point is, A, parabens are bad, but most importantly, Breast Cancer Awareness by Procter & Gamble, they're saying, oh, look, early prevention, or early detection, I'm sorry, prevents breast cancer, all this crap, when scientifically proven, the crap that they put in their products could be a link to causing cancer. So why in the hell would they be advertising? They're just trying to make themselves look good. They just put that little blurb up to make them look like we're a good company and we care about you and even though there's so many chemicals and garbage in our products it's okay um, and I really think that more people should be aware you know we say breast cancer awareness and we go to the nail salon and get little pink ribbons on our nails and expose our bodies to all these horrible toxins at the nail salon or we go and we dye our hair pink and again, expose ourselves to all this garbage. And I'm not saying that I never paint my nails or I never dye my hair. Obviously, I did dye my hair. But I'm being aware of cancer and breast cancer in particular by not exposing my body to all that crap. Um, unfortunately, our society tells us that we have to use these certain products and advertisements tell us false things and whenever I try to say to somebody look there's there's chemicals in this it's not good for you they either get angry with me or they just like put me off or think that I'm just some crazy tree hugger when the proof is in the pudding guys I mean do your research to me if I really took a stance against breast cancer and my mom died from or whoever died from breast cancer and I was really like gung-ho about preventing breast cancer I would not be going and being like oh I'm just gonna wear all this stupid pink stuff and walk in a walk that is only just raising money for a, a corporation that just really is greedy and only gives a small amount to research and prevention, what I would do is I would go and research everything that I can to prevent breast cancer and do that and spread the word to all of my friends. That to me is awareness. Not saying, oh look, here's some breast cancer awareness woman with, with pink on and we're gonna put a pink ribbon on our crappy products that actually could be causing your breast cancer. That to me, knowing, knowing, and this this goes beyond just crappy products. Maybe we're talking about cervical cancer. If we want to prevent cervical cancer, then stop using crappy products like disposable menstrual products. There it is again. So anyways, this video is really long, but the point is, be more aware. Don't listen to stupid things. You know, and a lot of these companies, if they really cared about breast cancer, like the NFL, they wouldn't be buying all this stupid pink stuff. They would just donate it to the right corporations rather than being like, hey, look, I have pink on. Yay. I'm totally like doing something good for the world. No. Yeah, it's great to let people know that this is this exists but last time I checked pink is a pretty color cancer is not very pretty cancer is awful it kills people in bed throwing up losing your hair it's awful for the people that I've known who have gone through it it sucks they don't want to think about pretty colors 
So next time you sing that pink ribbon, think about think about it a little bit more and think about what are you doing to be more aware of cancer. Not just by wearing a certain color or wearing a certain ribbon, but what are you doing to help your family, help your people around you to be more healthy? And that's all I have to say. And that's my two cents. So that, there you go. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be posting more videos soon.